All right. Well, hello and welcome in to um, our, it's our Fridays of the Fiscal. We're going to talk about 1099 corrections today. And, uh, you know, we did do a session with 1099 corrections and uh, W2Cs previously. Um, we made some changes and they just came out the other day, just specifically to the process for 1099 corrections. So we were thinking about doing a recording and then we're like, well, we might as well go ahead and do this live so that if you all have any questions, we can answer them. Um, and then we'll have the recording if you ever need to come back to it or, um, you know, if, if anybody can't make it today, this will be posted, you know, right out with all of the other uh, training recordings that we have. So, all right. So let's get started here. I'm going to hop right into our documentation page and we're going to follow this through um, to talk through the process for the 1099 correction forms. Now, the first thing just to note is the correction forms. So the correction forms are going to be used um, for updates to 1099s that happen after the original submission to IRS. So this is a situation, you know, not when they're originally like basically submitting for a 1099. They've already submitted a 1099 for this vendor to IRS and then they find out something's wrong on it. Like maybe the amount is wrong or it was coded wrong um, or some other piece of information was incorrect there. Uh, or maybe they, you know, uh, shouldn't have sent one. Um, so there can be any number of situations why they may find out later they need to submit a correction. And then that's when they're going to use the process that we're talking about today. All right. Let me switch a few things here, just a second. Okay, so we are going to, this is going to be under the periodic menu and the 1099 extracts. And then we have a section on this page for the corrections. We're going to kind of go through this correction section. We're going to, we're going to be hopping around a little bit to look at the pieces that um, are important for this. And I'm not sure I did, did it last time too. We took two different spots on the page, but you want this section, corrections, okay? So the very first note here, and the first thing that we're gonna talk about is prior to generating correction forms, review and update the um, IRS 1099 submission configuration if needed. Uh, this determines if the district will be submitting or if the ITC will be submitting the files. Um, the submitter and contact information utilized for the IRS format can be maintained in this configuration. So basically, and let's just go ahead and hop right into the software. If you, if you um, are an ITC in the situation where your district is submitting their own files, their own original files, you'd already be familiar with this for sure. I mean, I'm sure everybody has heard about it at some point, but any districts that, uh, we're so sorry, we're going to system configuration, any districts that are already submitting on their own already have this configured. And that part is not changing. Like the, as far as like in the case of the district submitting, like if you guys have your district submitting, don't think you have to come in here immediately and change all these. What was added is this section, the second section that says ITC correction, ITC submission information. So if the district's submitting, this box is checked and this information's filled out. And that is for like original forms too. For if the ITC is submitting, so if, if you're at an ITC that has your districts run, you know, just their um, extract files and then uh, you compile those using ITCM and submit those. When you're doing a correction, um, and this is like a bu the bulk of the update that we needed to do is we needed to account for the fact that the um, IRS format file, it has a couple different records on it. And there's a portion where ITCM is like adding this ITC submitter information 
Um, but when the ITC is submitting and using ITCM, they're usually compiling like a bunch of files. <laughs> when you're doing a correction, you're not compiling corrections for every single district. It's just, hey, this one district had an issue, so I need to make this file. So, so if you're an ITC that submits, when you go to this configuration, if you need to submit a correction, you need to check this box right here and fill out all of these fields. Now, when you need to do a correction for a district, you do need to fill this out before you do the process. However, like I don't think that this is necessarily something that you need to come in and go to all of your districts right now and fill this out. Um, you know, I understand that could be a hassle going through each one. You know, some districts may not need a correction for two years. So uh, basically, this is just a step. You just need to make sure that if you're creating these files, if you're creating these correction files from redesign, from USAS, then you fill this out at least before that. And that's why it's listed in the documentation at the top here. Um, and also contact information like that could change. So really, if you're going to do this process, then um, review this, make sure this is up to date. Uh, before you start. And then for district, like again, if they are, if the district is submitting, this information is probably up to date from when they um, created their original files, but it's good to check. Um, so in this case, I have the ITC correction checked. Uh, either one, one of these boxes can be checked, like the ITC correction. If both of these are checked, I will get an error when I save because it doesn't make sense to have both of them. Like they can't determine what information should then go on the files that are getting created. So only one of these can be checked at a time. Okay. You know, I usually say it when we start, but um, hope hope it goes unsaid, but um, I, will, I will make sure to say it anyways, is if you do have questions at any point in the process, uh, I do have my chat open, so please feel free to drop any questions or comments there. Um, if you, you know, want to uh, chime in, I know uh, last time we had like uh, someone use the little hand raise uh, in Zoom, which that was very cool. So whatever you're most comfortable with, if you have questions, just let me know. Okay. All right, so that's the configuration piece. So this is kind of like a one-time step or at least like, you know, a review probably, you know, before you're you're doing this on, um, you know, this year kind of thing. Like in the future, I'll probably be like, glance it over um, when you go to create those. All right. And then this format notes, so this gives a little bit more uh, like kind of a note on what this does. So if the configuration is checked for the district will submit or the ITC um, correction, then the transmitter and end of transmission records will be included in the format file. So this is very specifically describing what's going to happen in that IRS format output and what we're going to see. The file can be submitted directly to IRS and would not require the ITCM program for the ITC to append the header. Um, and then if neither configure option is checked, it doesn't contain the transmitter or end of transmission records. So um, if you do see a file that's in that case, like that would be um, one thing to check is to check that configuration. But we're going to kind of talk through. So so in our case, in where I have it set for today is that I'm going to show with the ITC correction checked. However, all the steps we're going to talk through are going to be the same. It's just a matter of like how the output kind of looks. And I'll um, I'll kind of show you the differences when we get to the one part that, that actually um, has a difference. So, so we'll roll with that. And we're going to go to um, periodic 10 and extracts, but we're going to put a pin in this. This is the page we're going to be on. Um, but let's hop back to our wiki because I have a couple of things that I want to talk about uh, before we actually get into like, here's the the step by step, which we will we will also do. Um, OK, so. Uh, the correction form is specified using submission type drop down uh, type one and type two correction. This is the part that's going to look a little bit different if you've done these before, if you use, use these drop downs. Um, 
And then this is basically just saying, like, as detailed by IRS, there are two different processes for making corrections. And these steps that we have here are intended to assist with the correction um, form creation and use as. But please also still refer to the general instructions and publication 1220. And if you were on the previous um, one, we talked about these. So I don't want to lose this um, um, this information. I, I want to go ahead and bring these up again so that we have it, everything together. Um, so I just clicked that link. And what we're looking at is the general instructions for information returns. Now, if you're going to do a correction, like, yes, we have these steps for creating the forms filled out. It's good to still review this. Um, what I want to, what I would do is do control F. And so I'll do corrections and I'll kind of tab through a couple of times. Um, and, and really what I want to point out here is this is where you'll have kind of like the helpful information as far, um, as like what's expected for these, because like we can tell you how to make them, but there's still some information in here, like, um, like, um, about, sorry, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it, like when they should be filed, right? Like, so I kind of gave my recap of, you know, it's after the original ones are formed, but, you know, every situation is going to be different. So is it, did they notice within three months or three years? Like some of that information, you're going to want to come right to, um, kind of the IRS information to, to figure out based on the situation. The other thing that I want to point out here is um, how to report incorrect payer name and or tax ID number. So if the payer discovers an error um, in their own information, so like if the district's information is incorrect, uh, then basically they're, they're not going to do this like correction form process for all of their individual like vendor 1099s they need to um, follow what's laid out here is to include all of this information and send a letter to IRS instead. So, so the corrections that we're talking about today are like, there's something with the vendor information that needs to be fixed. And then uh, let me see, I had a couple notes, the issue information. Um, and then, so let me just, I'm scrolling down here. Wait. Yes. Okay. I wish they had the menu like farther down on the page because I know what sections we want. We're going to section here. So this is this is what I'm referring to. So okay. So file corrections for e-filed forms. Um, see publication twelve twenty. We're going to also look at this. Um, next. We're gonna briefly look at that real quick. Um. And then, so here's where it's saying, like, if you filed the return with IRS and later discover you made an error, correct it as soon as possible. Uh, this is the paper form section, but I'll show you in a minute while I'm why I'm still looking at this. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about it in the context of electronic reporting. But if we scroll down here, this. Uh, little chart right here, error chart for filing corrected returns. We're going to see a similar version when we get over to publication 1220. I kind of feel like this one's uh, pretty clear. Um, so this is a good reference. And basically this information, as far as the error type, I want to show you this because error type one, error type two, this is what, when we have the steps for error type one and error type two, this is what it's based on. So I kind of just want to explain that because, you know, when you're looking at it in, and especially now our software is going to have an option for error type one and two, like it's helpful to also have the context that this is kind of where it's coming from. It's aligning with um, these steps that they've laid out. And then this is like how you follow these basically. So, um, so let's go over real quick to, um, and let me just go back to our page. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hang on. I'm so sorry for the scrolling. I, uh, okay. 
corrections. There we go. There we go. Didn't jump on me. All right. And then publication 1220 for official information on, on filing these reforms. So again, this is this document is more so the specifications for electronic filing, which that's what we're kind of talking about here because we're talk we're gonna talk through making the form to um, give to the vendor and then also the IRS format file. And again, what I'm gonna do here is just do control F, corrections, and we'll go to the corrected return section here. So we have a little bit more information in this one. And, you know, and the other reason that I, I think it's good and why, why, like, I'm referring to these versus, like, us just taking all of this information and, like, putting it in our documentation is, like, these things can change year to year. Like, this is very, this is year specific and, like, it's kind of a lot of information. So it's kind of good, like, at the time when you're doing the corrections to make sure you're referring here because it's the most up to date. <laughs> um um, especially for stuff like this. So if IRS successfully process an information return, so if they had an original that was sent and you identify an error, um, it, and then like this one says, and more than 10 uh, calendar days have passed since the file was accepted, then that's when you file a, a return. So this one gives a little bit more of a specific guideline. Um, and then the other thing that's important um, in this one is it does also say don't code information returns omitted from original file as corrections. So if there if there's a case where like a 1099 was missed, like a, a vendor never got one the first time around, then you know it was omitted from the original file. If you omitted it, file it as an original return. So that's not going to follow the process that we're talking about today. That's going to just be like the normal process of creating an original. Um, and then this was also uh, so this right here, um, this decision is new. So as of this year, if they filed the original form electronic, uh, it says they must also be filing the correction as electronic basically so so that's one of the reasons with looking over our process and making sure we need to um accommodate for a way to um have the itc submission especially being able to like get that just right from the usas part um we made this that's why we kind of like switched you know so quickly within this year um, and had that hot fix that came out because um, with this update, um, that electronic requirement is needed. So we want to make sure that's available. Okay. And then, you know, and then let me just come down here. A lot of this is similar information, but we're looking at the specifications. And um, I really just want to show, look, we have one transaction correction. And then um, on the next page is the two transaction corrections. Again, this is what we're going to kind of be talking through and looking at in USAS. Um, but this is like the electronic submission guidelines that um, we are also referring to in like what, what the software is generating as far as like the output file and such. So I just want to show that, you know, this is where it's coming from. So this is good information to have access and review. Um, and then I feel like I had one more note here. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. I said it all. Um, all right, so we'll go back. Why doesn't it spit me on the same page? I'm, I will double check our connections on this page. <laughs> okay, corrections. Okay, so that covers basically like the different things that are talking about in this first section. So what we'll do now is we'll hop into these um, these steps that we actually have. So type one um, is a one transaction correction. And this one is the simple one. This is the easy one. And uh, these type of corrections only require one single new form. Um, so if the original transaction was filed with like one or the more of the following, um, incorrect money, uh, like incorrect code or checkbox, or if the return should not have been filed. So all of like the vendor identifying information was correct. It was just something about, um, you know, one of these other pieces 
that that needs to be fixed. So what we're going to do for an example is we're going to do uh, we're going to show with the amount being incorrect. So correct the vendor with the appropriate information. So we come in and let's do, okay, actually let's run their original first, okay? So 1099, I'm going to find my vendor. And then, um, so here we have like this information, most of this looks the same. One thing that is going to be a little bit different when you're, so now I have it set where the district is not submitting, it's the ITC. Um, I have this original submission type and then this, you know, this is where I have the option to do correction. That didn't used to show, so that's a little bit new. So if, if your districts um, go to generate and then, you know, they're seeing that and they're like, oh, that looks a little bit different. Um, when they do their original files each year like it's going to be the same for them they just leave it defaulted to original it doesn't it's it's not going to include any extra uh records on the irs format so those can still be taken over to itcm um it's basically just a visual difference here and then when we're doing the correction forms we'll use this but let me generate so i'm generating the original first just so we can kind of see what this looks like where we're starting with it Oh, and I actually want to, um, I, so I did a, did an IRS format, but, uh, let's actually do a printer sealer because we want, we want a visual here. Okay. So let's, uh, zoom in a little bit on this. So here's what we're seeing. We have um, other income. We have 910. We have all of our information over here. And then um, the tax ID numbers. Like, So what we're going to say for this example is we're going to say, okay, all of this stuff looks good, but instead of 910, um, it actually we actually, the amount's wrong. So we need to issue a correction with the correct amount on here. So our first step, oops, sorry, we're gonna switch around again. So our first step is correct the vendor. And um, in this case, we're gonna use a vendor adjustment because we're updating the amount. Um, if there is a case where the return should not have been filed, you're gonna still follow that step. Uh, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the vendor adjustment to bring the taxable amount to zero. But when we do this, like, and especially in that situation, you still want to leave the same 1099 type and everything so that it can be picked up. So, so let's go to core vendors. This is where we're going to do this. And uh, see why I'm using this vendor? Because it's this first one on our grid right here. <laughs> Makes it nice and easy for us. And okay, now here's the thing. All right, so when we're here, look, we have, we're in March, 2024. So like when we're looking at, you know, this like year to date, like this is gonna be based on our current period. But what we wanna do is add an adjustment and we wanna make sure that we add it um, in 2023 so that, um, so that it'll actually, uh, like update the amount for the prior year to date. So let me do this. So let's create this and we'll do, this description can be whatever you want. The only reason I'm putting update in there is because I see I already have my adjustment from, uh, <laughs> from previous. Uh, so I just want to make sure we can distinguish this one. So whatever you want that description to be, I mean, whether this just says it's for like the correction or like the reason why maybe, um, you know, um, whatever, whatever helps to put in there for, um, for the district and then taxable, you want to make sure this is checked because, you know, this is a tax form. So it's going to be the taxable year to date that's going to be used. So make sure that's checked. And then what we'll do is let's add five hundred dollars on there. And um, if you wanted to, if the amount should have been lower, so like we it was nine hundred and ten dollars, right? 
So if it should have actually been a lower amount, we would make this a negative and that would reduce the amount. If it should have been higher, then we do the positive. So you can, you, you are able to adjust it either way. So let's post that. Okay, so that went into December. I can close this. Again, I'm not seeing it here because of my current period. If you really wanted to see it also on the vendor, um, you could go into the posting periods and change the current period. Um, but that's not, not required. So let's close out of this. Let's go back to our 1099 extracts. Okay. And so when we do this, we're going to select the same, the same type, the same form type. We want to do printer sealer and then our OSBO form. Okay. So um, now what we're going to do is this is a type one correction. So we're going to pick type one. We just, up, we updated the amount. We need it to be a correction. So we'll go ahead and do that and then let's generate. And let's zoom in on this so you all can see. Okay, so the first thing I wanna point out here is this corrected checkbox, it's checked. So for the type one, um, it will be checked as corrected. And then, um, you know, all our information over here is the same, but our other income field, our amount is now updated. It's increased by the $500 that we, um, that we had in there or that we had entered in there rather. So this was our original form. I switched back real quick. And then this is our updated form. And then this would be issued to the vendor. Um, now we also have the uh irs format which let me go ahead and just run this real quick we'll do it for the type one correction and this is a little bit more of the techie part but i figured i would pull the pull this up so we can look at this together um i'm not sure if i can zoom in on this oh i can okay good so uh what are we what we're looking at here and just to kind of point out briefly um because this was, you know, related with the updates. Oops, sorry. Is when I when we're looking at that documentation and we're talking about like the transmitter record, um, and like the end transmission record. So when we're looking at these files, each and this is all laid out in publication um twelve twenty. So if you are interested at all in like, you know, more information on this, like like I was actually through there. <laughs> uh recently looking into some of these so uh so there's a lot of information there that kind of helps clarify this and that's where this is coming from um but anyways so the so the basic breakdown is that when you're looking at these the very first letter on each of these rows it's a specific record type so a t record is the transmitter record and um, that's, you know, that's specified. So um, basically each one of these different um, fields that we're seeing here, each position is like expected to be a certain thing. So on the transmitter record, in this case, we have it, this is why we set up the ITC is going to be submitting the correction because then that information from the configuration is able to go pick up the ITC's transmitter information. And now if we were to go through on this first line, all of that information on the first line is coming from the ITC submitter information um, because they are gonna be transmitting the file. They're gonna be sending the file through the fire system. If we had this checked so that the district is submitting, uh, then the transmitter record would have the district's information in it. So T transmitter. A is the issuer record. So that's who is issuing the 1099. It's the district. So no matter what, this A record is always going to be the district's information. Um, or like, you know, the entity that is using the software that's, that's generating the 1099. Um, that's going to be their record. The B record is, uh, 
I forget the official term for this, but like this is where you're going to see the individual 1099 record information. So in this case, I have one specific vendor um, and 1099 selected, but if I had multiple correction forms that I'm running this for, or like multiple 1099s, then I'd have multiple B records. So the B record is like every individual 1099 that you're selecting in the file. And then the other thing here is like, so we have the year and then this code that is right after the year. So this G is like specific to the correction form. So like you wouldn't see this in an original file that would be blank. So, um, and then C and K are like total records. So this is telling you like here, see, here's the total amount. So if I had multiple rows, like uh, multiple 1099s here, then like these would be totals. And then F is the last one. This is the end transmission record. So uh, again, I know I kind of just go through these and this is just kind of like my, you know, basic descriptions of them too. But I feel like especially when we're kind of talking about that um, configuration and having like the district, uh, like district will submit or like I ITC correction checked. Like that's why both of those can't be checked because depending which one of those check boxes is being used is going to decide whose information is going on the T record. There's no situation where both of them would ever be together on that same T record. So that's why, um, you know, some of these things work how they do. So I just want to talk about that because then, you know, um, depending on the situation we're making these files, it just tells you a little bit more about uh, what you're seeing here. Uh, the last piece of the puzzle uh, is if like when there's the situation when the ITC is going to take the file over to ITCM and combine them together the files from USAS will actually not have a T record or an F record. And then like, so, so all of the different district files are just this middle part, just the detail, just the detail lines. And then ITCM is actually going through and putting the header and end record on it. So, so that's a little bit what it's doing. Okay. And, and like, hopefully, uh, you know, I hope I didn't get too, too techy looking at the, the, uh, um, data files there, but I feel like that kind of helps, especially when you're thinking about like, okay, well, why are some of these things working this way? Like, you know, when you're actually creating these files, like this is what you're getting. So that's the type one. Um, and output. And what we just walked through here is mapped out in these steps, you know, choosing the payment year, choosing the type of return uh correction and then you know when viewing these forms the corrected checkbox at the top uh will be checked okay all right so let's move on to the type two correction and these ones again like i said type one's the simple one the type two is a little bit more complicated These corrections require two forms to be issued. The first one cancels out the information submitted with the incorrect information. And then the second one reissues a form with the correct payee vendor information. You liked seeing the detail in the text, thanks. You're welcome, okay, good, I'm glad. I'm glad that helps. All right, so, uh, when you're going to use the form two, this is going to be in the case of um, if the original trans uh, transaction file had one or more of the following, like no payee tin or like an incorrect payee tax ID number. So like your vendor's tax ID was wrong. The vendor name, the payee name was wrong, or it was like the wrong form type. Um, so it needs to be reissued. So basically these are like big changes and let's go look at one of our things. So that's like, uh, here, the, oh, I can't highlight that part, but recipients tin and then recipients name. And the reason that this one is more complicated is because basically like, this is the information that they're using to identify who this 1099 is going to. 
So if I have this number and that's what they're using to look up this, we'll say vendor, because that's, you know, kind of how we have it in our software. Like that's where the information is coming from in our software. So if they use this number to look up this entity, if we change this number, then how do they know it's a different entity, you know? So what we have to do first is say, okay, this number was actually not supposed to get an amount, but then we will we'll update it to the new number and then issue, you know, and then say, okay, this is what we're actually issuing it to. So that's why there's two steps, but we're going to go through those. All right. Step one, pre prepare a form to cancel out the first information return. I probably should have done this before, but let me zoom in on this. Um, prepare a form to cancel out the first information return. Um, the first thing we're going to do is nothing. We're not going to make changes to the incorrect vendor information. So what we'll do is let's say we use the same vendor, OASBO. But we'll we'll actually look at both changing the tax ID number and the name. But the first form, we want to make sure that we can cancel this out. So we're not going to go to the vendor yet. We're not going to go fix the information, which I know is going to be like, you know, I know that's tempting to be like, okay, this is wrong. I need to go fix it now. Um, but the first step we're going to do is come to our 1099 extract. Uh, again, it's payment year. We'll do 1099 miscellaneous, pick the vendor. And then this time we're going to do type two correction. And we have this handy box. So we actually, if you've used this in past years, um, we had a box that did the same thing, but we renamed this to make this up much more clear on what exactly it's doing. So if I check zero all amounts, then what this is going to do when I generate this form, did I pick printer stealer? I didn't. Okay, hang on one more time. So what this is going to do, so again, I didn't do anything on this vendor record, right? And this is the same one we were looking at for our type one. What this did, we have all of our vendor information. It zeroed this out, this other income. It basically just made it, it, it's, it allows you to create the form with all zeros for the, for the reason of like, you're not changing the amount. So like, we didn't want you to have to go into the vendor screen and do an adjustment to bring it to zero make the form, go into the vendor screen, put the amount back, you know, and then come back and, and make the second one. So this is like a really easy way just to be able to make sure that the form has all zeros, but you're not actually changing anything on the vendor. So, um, so here it is. It has the corrected box checked. It has all zero amounts. And then this is the first half of the equation that tells them, you know, this whatever this recipient name and tax ID number actually should not have had amounts. Uh, like it, basically cancel it. That's what it's saying, cancel it. And so here's kind of, this is explaining that. Second step, prepare a form with the correct information. So uh, correct the vendor with the appropriate information. You know, this is where we're gonna go make our updates. All right, so we're going to our core vendors. Wait, what, what's going on? Okay, there we go. And uh, let me just jump right into edit mode here because we are going to update this. So let's say, uh, we'll just change the tax ID. And then if we need to change the name, so uh, primary name is here, but the name that's being used on the 1099s, and let me just um, open this up a little bit, is down here in their locations, and they could have multiple. It's going to be whichever one has 1099 checked on it. So in this case, we just have one. So if we need to update this name, We'll just put updated just so we can clearly see that it's changed. And then um, once that's updated, then we'll go ahead and save this. Would you create a file with the zero amounts first? 
So when you do that stuff, so before you make any changes to the vendor, so pretend we didn't just do that. Um, so before you make any changes to the vendor, like, yes, you would do. So we're kind of doing it with looking at the printer sealer copies, but you would also want to make like the IRS format file as well. So when you're in this first step here, prepare a form to cancel out the first, um, you come through and then, um, yeah, generate like your IRS format, printer sealer, any other reference copies, um, with that box checked and that's going to give you like the first half of the equation. Okay. And then, and then, um, because yeah, cause once you, once you make the updates to the vendor, then any files from there are going to have the updated information. So we'll go back and we'll do 10 item miscellaneous. Let's do printer sealer so we can see it. And then uh, move this over. And so now I'm going to pick type two, but for my second form in the type two, I'm not going to check zero amounts because I want the amounts now. Now I've corrected the tax ID number in the name. So I want the amounts to show again. So I can go ahead and generate this. And okay, this one is not going to have the corrected box checked. Um, it's going to have the update to the ID number, the update to the name, or either or. Like you might not be updating both, but whichever the piece of information was that needed to be updated. And then it has the amount again. So that is there. And so this is the second half of the equation. I want to show, I'm going to show the... Um, the IRS format for this one too. So really, and you know, I don't know we're kind of like looking at the example of like if the ITC is submitting is how our configuration, this whole process though, like the actual steps are the same if the district is submitting. Um, and, and it was like, this is very similar to everything, you know, that it would have been before for the district submitting. The one difference is like our update that we did added these type one and type two corrections. So when they're doing this type two correction to do the new form, like instead of an original form, um, do, it would be the type two correction without the check. And one thing that this is adding, did I run this? No. Is I mentioned when we were looking at um, our, our text form, like our data format is We've added in review of publication 1220, um, that new form has like a C record here. So um, so that is what that part's changing from like the previous process to make sure that when they're doing the new form, they are still doing the type two, um, but having the amounts on there. Okay. Okay, so that's the so that's what the type two, and then let's see. Um, just want to make sure as far as um anything else I wanted to cover. I have some notes on <laughs> on uh, looking at the form file, which we kind of knocked out with the first uh in the first type errors. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um. Oh, okay. So the last thing I want to mention. So with that said, when you get the uh for the second uh for the type two you're gonna get the irs format with the zeros you're gonna get that output file and then you're gonna get the second output file with like the new updated form so that is gonna be two files to submit so i wanted to note that okay um we have a question if you have a vendor with a new ein ssn and name change from what was originally submitted do you have to select type two correction for the newly submitted form or can you just do a new submission for the new form? So my understanding with that situation is, so if it's a vendor with a new like tax ID number and name change, if they had an original form submitted, when you do the reissue, then you would go through these steps where 
you would do type two, zero all amounts to cancel like whatever the previous name and ID was. And then for reissuing the new form to them, you want to do type two correction, uncheck zero amounts because it has that indicator now in the file. Um, basically, the, the printer sealer form is going to look exactly the same, but the IRS format has this indicator that um, publication 1220 mentions. So we made sure that's in there when they do it this way. So yeah, I mean, the printer sealer looks exactly the same, but if you're doing it, you might as well just generate them both from, <laughs> from doing it <laughs> um, with the same setup. You're welcome. No problem. Okay. Well, you know, and I know this process, it's like, it doesn't come up all the time. So sometimes you may be doing a couple of these a year, but sometimes like you may not have done one for a while. And especially if your districts are submitting, like I know that um, it's kind of few and far between. So if you have questions, definitely feel free to always put them in, let us know. Uh, so both files will be submitted as corrected, not as corrected and original. Yes, Nancy, that is my, the, they will both be correction files. That is my understanding. I will say, um, like, so we reviewed publication 1220. We made sure that all the indicators are correct in the files. If there happens to be, I mean, when you submit those, like, if it gives you any problems with submitting to let us know, we do have a way to, like, not put the headers on and, and combine them with ITCM. But basically, like, uh, for the ITC steps, we made it consistent with like what the district steps were. So we believe that that will work, but we do kind of have like a backup plan if not, <laughs> if uh, you have any problems. Okay. If you forgot a 1099 for someone, you would file an additional original file. Correct. Brenda, that is my understanding. So in um, when we were reviewing publication 1220 earlier, there is some text in there. And I think I'll just read it because I have it noted in mine instead of finding it. It says, don't code information returns omitted from the original file as corrections. If you omitted a return, file it as original. So yes, so that would be like the norm, the, the regular original process. You wouldn't have to go through like this different uh, submission type um, steps. Okay. Okay, awesome. And then just to finish up this documentation section, you know, we do have some examples in here um, that just shows like what the correction form is. Um, and then, yeah, we're set to go. But but absolutely, uh, again, I know that these don't always come up, but when they do, you're kind of trying, <laughs> trying to get through and remember and make sure everything's right. So if you have any questions along the way, please, you know, just uh, submit a ticket to us. We're happy to happy to help you out with it. And uh, all right, well, I'll keep an eye out for any other last minute questions. But um, thank you so much for attending. Uh, happy Friday. I hope you all have a great weekend and we'll see you on the next one.